what's up you guys this is Rob from the gay guy plays and today on the daily grind I'm gonna show you how I farm a shit ton of focus in public groups now if I'm gonna be completely honest with you one of the main reasons that I'm making this video is because whenever I'm focus farming live on stream a lot of people ask me exactly what my builds are how I'm doing what I'm doing exactly what I'm running on all of my builds and how all of that kind of works now if I'm going to be straightforward with you, a lot of that information is already found on the channel. However, it's spread out on many different videos. So I figured what I would go ahead and do is grab all of that stuff and dump it into one video so that you guys could see exactly how I do it. However, the one thing that I do need to kind of point out here is that this is going to be a focus on just how I farm in public groups. There is, of course, the Equinox slash Avara solo uh, stealth focus farm, and uh, that's going to be in another video that I'll go ahead and post up in a card. Then to follow that card, I'm going to go ahead and follow it up with another video about how you can farm very, very effectively with a single lens using Titania. Regardless, without ado, let's go ahead and jump into the facts and figures so that you guys can figure out exactly how it's done. Now, before we jump into loadouts, let's go ahead and cover some of the basic mechanics when it comes to focus farming, starting with Affinity Gain. Now, this one is super important mainly because of the fact that Affinity Gain directly correlates with how much focus your Warframe is going to get per kill. So, all you really need to remember is three different percentages. 100%, 50%, and 25%. 100% is the amount of affinity your Warframe gains whenever they make a kill with a Warframe ability. So if you think about it in this case, if we're using Frost and he kills an enemy using Avalanche, 100% of that affinity is going to go to the Warframe. Next up is 50%. This is how much affinity your Warframe gains whenever they make a kill with a weapon. So let's pretend Frost is using a melee weapon and he kills an enemy with that melee weapon. Well, 50% of that affinity goes to Frost, and 50% of that affinity goes to the weapon that made the kill, in this case, his melee weapon. The last percentage is 25%. Now, this is what is considered the general affinity gain percentage. Um, so, in this case, if we're taking a look at it, this is how much affinity you would gain whenever an ally within your affinity range makes a kill. So, your ally makes a kill, 25% goes to the Warframe, and the remainder goes to the weapons that you have equipped on the Warframe. It doesn't matter if it's the one that you're wielding primarily, it just matters that those weapons are equipped. So let's pretend Frost has a full loadout. So Frost would get 25%, um, uh, his primary would get another 25%, his secondary would get 25%, and his melee would get 25%. However, Let's pretend Frost is only wielding a melee weapon, does not have a primary equip, does not have a secondary equip. Alright? Frost gets 25% of the affinity, and then his melee weapon, since it's the only weapon he has equipped, gets 75% of the cut. So as you can see here, there are different percentages kind of floating around when it comes to um, how much affinity you're gaining, and it does kind of matter exactly where you're putting your lenses. So without ado, let's go ahead and jump into that next part and take a look at lenses. Alrighty, now majority of you guys are going to have to bear with me here, mainly because of the fact that we might have some newer players that don't quite know how to do this. However, if you didn't already know, once your Warframe or weapon hits rank 30, you can actually go ahead and hit the Actions key and place a new lens on there. Now, as you can see right here, I already have a lens currently placed on this Warframe, and it says Replace Lens. I'm going to go and click on it just so that we can take a look at the menu that follows. Um, but basically, once you get to this menu, you'll be able to place a lens on your Warframe or weapon. However, in this case, like I was saying, when it comes to replacing a lens, be very, very careful because that lens that you replace disappears completely. It's out of your inventory, you never gonna see it again, so just be very, very careful um, when you see the word replace. <laughs> but I wanted to bring you guys here so that you can see exactly what's going on with these different lenses. So there are different tiers. As you can see here, we have the basic lens. Now these basic lenses are available from Cetus Bounties, and they're like the lower tiered bounties, and they will afford you a 1.25 
um, focus multiplier, I guess you will say. So basically, you gain affinity, multiply that by 1.25 for whatever it's equipped on, and then that turns that into focus. Now, we also have the greater lenses. So as you can see here, we have greater lenses for each individual school, and these ones are actually available from the market. So you'll see the blueprints that are available. The blueprints will actually consume four of the corresponding lenses, um, as well as some argon and a forma. So it's kind of pricey when it comes to resources, but it does save you a bit of time because you get a 1.75 multiplier. So again, your affinity goes into wherever it goes into, wherever your lens is focused into, and then it does 1.75 times that and puts it into your focus. Now with the Eidolon lens that you saw uh, that I had equipped on Frost, that's actually available from the upper end of the Cetus bounties as a rare reward. So you need to use a lens, and whatever lens you get will dictate the, the end type of Eidolon lens you get. And that actually gives you a 2.25 multiplier. So you gain the affinity, it's multiplied by 2.25, and it turns into focus. Hallelujah! Now the big reason that I wanted to go ahead and cover this alongside affinity is mainly because of the fact that it all kind of depends on where you want to place these lenses. Now, in general, I will always place the most valuable lens on a Warframe because of the way that things work with affinity. So as you guys know, I use a lot of offensive frames when it comes down to gaining affinity. So we have that 100% clause, 100% of the affinity goes to the Warframe whenever it makes a kill with one of its abilities. So, because of the fact that I want to gain the most focus possible, I'm going to put in the Eidolon lens or the greater lens into the Warframe, and then I'll use a lower version lens on um, either whatever weapon that I decide to bring in with them. So, mainly because of the fact that the Warframe is going to be doing a lot of the killing and gaining a majority of the affinity, I'm going to put the better lens on the Warframe in this specific case. The specific cases that you're going to end up seeing today. Um, so just keep in mind too, if you're planning on bringing more than one weapon into your focus farm, uh, you're going to want to, if you want to have the optimal affinity gain, uh, put a lens on every single weapon that you bring in, uh, preferably the same lens from the same school, mainly so that you keep your focus gain focused. Does that make any sense? Hopefully that does to you. <laughs> so when it comes down to what public node I focus farm on, you're pretty much always going to catch me on Hydron, and that is for two big reasons. The primary one being the fact that it's highly populated. There's always going to be people there, so you can queue up for it and pretty much always end up with a full group. A full group means the maximum amount of spawns, the maximum amount of spawns means the maximum amount of enemies you can kill, the maximum amount of enemies you kill can get you the most amount of affinity for that, you know, area. So having a lot of people around is always good, that way you can get as many kills as you possibly can and get more focus. So that's pretty much a no-brainer. The second reason that I like Hydron is because of the fact that the map itself is pretty tightly spaced. So it's not this big, you know, stretched out map where a lot of your allies are going to be running out of affinity range. You just have some tight quarters where you're basically all clustered in like sardines and you're not going to in general get out of people's affinity ranges. Now, of course, there are some, you know, there are some instances while somebody will be on the far end of the room, you'll be on the other far end of the room and you might not catch each other. But for the most part, everybody's going to be there. And as you guys know, whenever your ally kills an enemy, you get affinity too as long as you're within their affinity range. So you're trying to basically be stingy and try to get your hands on all of the affinity you can get. Now, of course, there are other nodes that you can farm on for like solo focus farms or like, you know, if um, there is a, what is it called, a sortie where there's like an Eximus stronghold, that's a great place to get focus as well. But we're just talking about me generally jumping into a public mission and getting focus, and that's pretty much always going to be Hydron. Okay, moving on to the loadout, as you can see here, we're actually starting things off with our focus school of choice, which of course is Naramon, and that's primarily because of an amazing passive that it actually grants. So as you can see here, we have Affinity Spike. Um, kills from melee attacks grant 45% more affinity. 
So you're getting more affinity per kill, which basically means you're getting more focus points per kill, which is pretty friggin' awesome. Now, of course, that ties in to our actual loadout itself. Now, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, kills from allies actually grant you 25% affinity for the Warframe, and then spreads the rest amongst the other weapons that you have equipped. And as you can see here, we don't have a primary equip, we don't have a secondary equip, but we do have a melee weapon equipped. So whenever your ally kills an enemy, 25% is gonna go into your frost, and then, um, or your Warframe of choice, not necessarily specifically frost. And then 75% of that affinity is gonna go into your melee weapon. So now we've focused all of that focus gain into one melee weapon, and that weapon also happens to get 45% more affinity whenever it kills an enemy. So you, you're doing double duty here. You're focusing down all of that into one weapon instead of spreading it out uh, across multiple weapons and requiring you to use more lenses. Plus, that weapon itself has the ability to gain more affinity whenever it kills an enemy. So we've got more affinity gain and we've got focused affinity gain and then of course we've got your Warframe, but the other trick that we've got up our sleeve, of course, is our beautiful, wonderful Smita. You guys know how much I love the Smita, and that's mainly because of the fact of this precept here. So Charm provides a random buff of good luck for its owner. And the buff you guys are looking for, of course, is the double pickups. Now, double pickups aren't just pickups. Um, so you're not getting, you know, just double energy, you know, double uh, credits, double resources, not just that, but you're also getting double affinity gain. So the buff that you're going to want to look for because it doesn't specify what it is but you can always tell by the timer so the if you see a buff that is over 30 seconds up in your timer window it's actually a buff of two minutes so you get a two minute double pickup buff but basically what happens is if you see anything over 30 seconds you know it's the double pickup buff so plan your attacks accordingly make sure you're getting as many kills as you possibly can and make sure you're grabbing those affinity orbs because you get the affinity orbs and then you get the double pickup buffs and then you start going ape shit crazy with your warframe abilities and boom you are getting shit tons of affinity it is absolutely amazing so make sure you have your smita ready make sure you have your melee weapon ready make sure you have naramon going and all of that and you will be very very successful in your runs now let's go ahead and jump into the builds and before we move on to builds i did want to make note of one thing as you guys know i pick up prime access and prime access actually comes with a 90 day affinity booster so there is no point in time when i'm running without a booster going definitely keep that in mind because mine are now starting to kind of like overlap so I don't think that there's going to be any point in time where I'm not having a booster it's absolutely fantastic and it helps cut down your focus farming time in half so it's definitely something to consider if you have the ability to pick one up so when it comes to warframe selections for focus farming I love aoe frames that deal a lot of damage and can actually go toe to toe with armored targets frost is probably one of my favorite examples of that especially because of the fact that he has armor reduction built into his ultimate so as you can see here we've got a little bit of a balanced everything we do have efficiency in there because you want to cast his abilities fairly often and get yourself you know that 100% affinity chunk which is always nice we've still got some survivability in there um, mixed in with power strength it's all pretty balanced and it's all really really fantastic um, now if I'm gonna be confessing things and being 100% honest with you once you get to some of the higher ranking waves so let's say you get to about like uh, um, wave 20 right you're gonna stick it through past wave 20 a lot of frost's damage is actually gonna be CCing the enemies and keeping them in place and then you go in with your melee weapon and you finish them off with that now because of the fact that we are pairing that up with Naramon it doesn't hurt so bad because of the fact that you're getting that 45% boost to the affinity gain for the weapon so keep that in mind frost is still getting 50% of the affinity but the weapon is now getting 50% but a higher percentage because you're getting even more affinity from the actual boost when it comes to the uh, Naramon passive. It's kind of like weird and hard to explain but since the weapon is getting more affinity you're going to end up getting more focus as well. It's it's, it's an odd thing to explain, but I'm just letting you know that right now. And the cool thing about this is because of the fact that if you decide to take it to wave 30, which is 
usually where I end up taking it to if I just want to do a single run. It still provides some really, really good CC and allows you to still dish out a good chunk of damage. Now, if we're talking about easy AoE damage, of course, we are not going to ignore Ember. And Ember was one of those ones that I wasn't exactly sure how she would do. But once you get her going, she is pretty freaking good. She actually follows some of the similar veins that Frost does. AoE damage that can contend with armored targets. We have Fire Quake there for a little bit of that CC when you bring her into the later waves. But to pair up with that, I do want you guys to remember that Accelerant exists. Accelerant exists and makes it a little bit easier to chew through large groups of enemies, especially when they're highly armored. As you guys know, armored targets take a lot less damage, but when you got some Accelerant in there, making some magic for you, you're going to be completely fine and dandy. The one thing that I do want to point out with this Ember build, as you can see, the duration's a little short, but we do have some efficiency in there. I also run her with Arcane Energize so that, you know, her pickups um, can give her a big resurgence of energy instead of just kind of getting little bits and pieces here and there. And that tends to be able to uh, keep uh, fire quake up and going for the entire time so definitely one of my favorites something that I had a whole lot of fun with and y'all saw her on stream so she performs quite well alrighty we had frost we had ember but when it comes to the queen of aoe damage there is nothing like a good old spores Saren. as you can see I've made a couple tweaks of this from my original build um, but that's because you know we got auger reach we got auger secrets in there why not take advantage of all of those mods without any of the downsides of overextended so super Super, super happy with this build definitely have a lot of fun with it and I'm gonna admit I definitely feel like Saren is potentially the best of the bunch when it comes to focus farming however it can get a little boring because this is a spores build and what you do with the spores build is you get put up a molt you take your spores down and you start smacking at the molt to pop the spores and spread the spores it can get a little brain deadening so I'm gonna say listen if you want to mix it up with maybe an Ember or Frost, it's always good to kind of give your brain a little bit of a rest. Or, just putting this out there, if you're going to be using all of the melees, one of the things that I would suggest is to toss down your spores, maybe whack at it a couple times, then run around a little bit and hit some of the enemies. If you've got Contagion on, um, the great thing about that is, of course, you're going to be transmitting your um, Toxic 2 when it comes down to the spores as well. And basically what ends up happening is you end up dealing more damage and you get, you get a little bit of energy back to boot. Because I'm going to be honest with you, as much as I love this build and as, I'm, as much as I loved how much focus this ended up getting me, sometimes sitting there and just whacking at spores all day made you a little crazy. So give yourself a little bit of a break, run around, hit a couple of the enemies, or maybe just swap to a different frame to give yourself a little bit of a brain break. Alrighty, so before I signed off, I figured I would go ahead and give you the build for the Zaw that I use for focus farming. It is a Plague Crit Path, Plague Boquin, and a Varjeet Jai 2. I always get questions about this one, um, and I quite like it. You don't need to use this one specifically. As you can tell, there's nothing crazy different about it. Use whatever melee weapon that you like that you want to go ahead and put a lens on um, it's really really easy regardless that about does it for me for now I hope that answers all of your focus farming questions when it comes down to public farming as you guys know I also have videos on the best focus farming technique which of course is the stealth multiplier like sleep equinox sleep avara farm um, as always I have that lens that single lens video that I was talking about when it comes to Titania um, you guys can go ahead and check this out, but when it comes to what you see me doing on stream, um, this is pretty much what I use. So that about does it. Uh, let me know if you have more questions. Toss those in the comments below. And as always, love somebody, heart nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye